Disclaimer. This is just a self-indulgent fantasy on my part. I'm not actually making a Secrets of Druin adaptation at this time. This is just an if I ever make it as any kind of an artist that can pitch this project kind of thing. Second disclaimer, every named character ever to appear in the Secrets of Druin will be mentioned in this video, so significant Druin spoilers follow. I've been dreaming of a Secrets of Druin TV adaptation for about six years now, for no particular reason. I was big into the series when I was maybe nine, and then when I was 21, I went, man, remember Droon? And proceeded to buy and read all 44 books in the series, jotting down adaptational notes all the while. For my thoughts on individual books, see season one of my podcast, easily accessible on a playlist on this channel, which includes a segment where I discuss each book in detail and the fantasy casting choices that follow. They say that Nickelodeon is developing plans to adapt Druin into a TV show, and when I say they, I mean Wikipedia, and the article has said that for years and years, so I don't think it's true. I think I'm free to imagine this adaptation however I like. The plan, so to speak, I've developed in the past year or so is as follows. Rooster Teeth has recently partnered with Scholastic to produce children's novels set in the Ruby universe, so if I had any sort of clout as a creator, I'd go before Rooster Teeth and Scholastic to pitch a six-season animated adaptation of Scholastic's own The Secrets of Droon for web streaming. The art style would be cel-shaded CGI as seen in Rooster Teeth's Ruby and Genlock, but with an aesthetic based on the Droon book's illustrations instead of anime. Each of the 44 fairly small books would be divided into two episodes. Season 1 would consist of the first eight books. Season 2, uh, based on the following nine, ending with special edition number one. Season 3 would be these six books, season 4 these nine, season 5 these eight books, and season 6 would consist of the final four books, with the relatively hefty final volume being divided into four episodes instead of two. And now the main purpose of this video, my fantasy voice cast of the series. The main characters. Our main characters are Eric Hinkle, Julie Rubin, and Neil Kroger, three 11-year-old kids from the real world who discover the magical world of Droon in the closet under Eric's basement stairs. And if that gives you Harry Potter and Narnia vibes, those do in fact permeate the entire series in a good way. In Droon, the three kids befriend the Princess of Droon, Princess Kia, and these are our four stars. It took a lot of thinking to come up with a mental voice match for our main characters, but I think I finally pulled it off. Eric ought to be voiced by Elizabeth Maxwell, an anime voice actress and a favorite of Rooster Teeth, Julie by the daughter of one of Rooster Teeth's founders, Millie Ramsey, Neil by another well-known name in anime, Brittany Karbowski, and Kia by Zia, my little sister, who has never actually signed off on my idea of using just her first name as a stage name. <laughs> All four main characters have doppelgangers, those respectively being Prince Ungast, Duchess Dumpella, Duke Snorfo, and Princess Nefu, who would naturally be voiced by those same actors. Another prominent main character is Max the Spider Troll, who doesn't often contribute much to the plot, but appears in every book, and would thus appear in nearly every episode. I'd like him to be voiced by Rooster Teeth's own, Jeremy Dooley. The last of our heroes is the wizardly mentor, Galen Longbeard. My initial idea for the voice of Galen was to use Mark Hamill, and I held on to that idea until fairly recently when I saw Tony Abbott, author of The Secrets of Droon, tweet that he'd like to play Galen in an adaptation. Even if he was joking, I really genuinely liked that idea and started picturing Galen that way, even though I've never actually heard Tony Abbott speak. Regardless, the actor playing Galen would also play Nelag, Galen's magical double, and the wizard Sneeze, a siege engine shaped like Galen's head. Our main villain, at least for roughly the first half of the series, is one Lord Spar, an evil black-cloaked sorcerer who wants to rule Droon. He'd be voiced by Sage Man, that's me! I've always enjoyed reading Spa's lines in an evil sort of voice. I would also want to voice Galen Shortbeard, a younger version of Galen, and the great wizard Uruk, for plot-related reasons, not just to stroke my own ego. For Shortbeard, I'd just try to pattern the performance off of however Galen's normal actor does it, and I picture myself going full William Shatner for the role of Uruk. Just as we occasionally encounter a young Galen, we also see both Spar and Galen at around the same age as our main heroes identified as Kid Spar and Galen Nobeard. I'd want both of them to be voiced by Aramie Joy, my other little sister. My plan for dividing the books into seasons would mean Kid Spar would be a member of the main cast for the duration of season four. And now, supporting cast. 
I initially envisioned my adaptation as a live-action series with a lot of practical effects and puppets, and I retained most of my casting decisions from that era, hence why screen actors who resemble their characters play most of the human characters, while popular voice actors play the less human ones. We probably won't be able to get actors this high-profile with this version of the series, so I imagine replacing many of my original casting choices with Rooster Teeth's in-house talent, regulars of the nearby Funimation studio, members of popular internet theater group Team Star Kid, or collaborators of my very own Tapas and Stuff Productions. In fact, I've already replaced some uh, fantasy cast members who've passed away with Star Kid members. First Family of Droon and Main Character Variants. Uh, the First Family of Droon are significant in the lore of the series, and are centered around the family's matriarch, Zara, the Queen of Light. The mightiest of wizards, deceased some 500 years, when she's depicted, I'd want Zara to be played by Olivia Wilde. Much significance in Droon surrounds Zara's three sons, who, in a plot twist around the end of Season 2, turn out to be Galen, Spar, and Uruk. Not in that order, hence why they all three would be played by the same actor as boys and as young men. All three sons appear in many forms throughout the series, uh, let's start with Galen. In the book Pirates of the Purple Dawn, the villain Ming has the power to turn Galen into Gelna, a ditzy female version of himself. Let's go with Star Kid's Lauren Lopez. My original idea was for Mark Hamill's Galen to turn into Carrie Fisher, but sadly that was not meant to be. Some of Galen's other disguises in the series include Beffo, King of the Island Trolls, and the amazing Flemke, an incompetent minstrel, who I imagine being respectively voiced by Warwick Davis and Seth Green in order to preserve the twist that they're Galen. In the book The Mask of Malaban, the titular Prince Malaban turns out to be Spar in disguise. I'd want Malaban's voice to be provided by Tim Curry. In the book In the Shadow of Gaul, an elderly version of Spar called Shadowface debuts, and an elderly Spar later becomes a recurring character. I'd want him, in both cases, to be played by Doug Jones. In the book In the City of Dreams, Shadowface disguises himself as an old woman to help the heroes, and I imagine Andrea Martin making a cameo as that woman. As for Uruk, his journey is a long one. The first we see of him, though we don't know it at the time, is as Prince Zorfendorf, a reclusive prince who never actually appears in the series and may or may not actually exist, revealed in one of the last pages of the series to be one of Uruk's identities. An early book features Spar disguising himself as Zorfendorf, and I'd want that role to be played by Jesse McCartney. Another of Uruk's incarnations is the mysterious amnesiac Prince of Stars, who I'd want to be voiced by Jason Marston. Uruk appears as a mysterious shadowy figure on several installments, uh, not revealed to be Uruk until the final book, and that mysterious figure ought to be played by Yuri Lowenthal. When the figure is revealed in the final episode to be an elderly Uruk, we'd replace Yuri with William Shatner. Finally, in the book Moon Magic, uh, Kia and Eric meet their future selves, and in the book The Genie King, Neil does likewise. Uh, I'd want them played respectively by Taylor Swift, Elijah Wood, and Robert Downey Jr. Never gonna happen, but a guy can dream. Friends and Allies. The most interesting characters in Droon are the gang's many recurring friends and allies. Let's start with Kia's parents, the king and queen of Droon. Queen Relna is a great wizard who starts off the series lost and cursed, but eventually comes back and is the most recurring ally. And King Zello is a boisterous barbarian warrior. They should be voiced respectively by Grey Delisle and Brad Garrett. One of the book's more iconic allies is Khan, king of the purple lumpies, who, as you can see, are pillow people. His frequent companion is Badamogi, king of the Ubja mole people. Uh, I'd cast, respectively, Jim Cummings and Billy West. Friddle the Inventor is a valuable ally who builds many crafts and vehicles, and finding the books a bit overwhelmingly white by the time he debuted, I decided to cast Asif Manvi. Ortha is the queen of the Bangledorn monkeys, a peaceful people whose lands forbid magic. I'd want her voiced by Cree Summer. Two of her subjects, young siblings Woot and Twee, are also recurring allies, and I'd cast Kath Susie and Rob Paulson. Hob the Imp, maker of magical masks, who tends to switch between adversary and ally, ought to be voiced by Greg Proops. Shago is the lovable rat-faced thief of Agravur, and I imagine the golden tones of Maurice LaMarche in his role. And finally, Jabbo, extraordinary pie-maker and future king of Dubesh, I always pictured played by Weird Al Yankovic. Other recurring allies include the Seven Genies of the Dove, uh, four of whom are worth talking about, uh, starting with Hoja, the seventh genie, who's simply a dead ringer for Kevin Michael Richardson. The second genie, Anusa, Galen's true love, merits a very special guest star, let's say Lupita Nyong'o. 
the less recurring genies, Feferello and Jime, I picture George Takei and Jessica DeSico, respectively. And finally, the Knights of Silver Snow, a trio of goofball giant knights. Let's go with Ty Burrell as Old Rolf, Ahmed Best as Lunk, and Simon Helberg as Smee. Major villains! Droon has a fairly decent rogues gallery, if a small one. The villains range from playful to utterly irredeemable, most surprisingly favoring the latter. Around halfway through the series, uh, Lord Spar is ousted as the main threat and replaced with Emperor Ko and his lieutenant Gethwing. It's the latter who eventually turns out to be the big bad of the whole story. They should be voiced respectively by Ron Perlman and the incomparable Frank Welker. Ko's servant Saba, being a phantom copy of the Emperor himself, should also be played by Ron Perlman. Princess Salamandra of Shadowthorn is a semi-recurring antagonist with time-manipulating abilities. For her, uh, seeing her as a sort of a counterpart to Spar, I decided to cast Natalie Yenfjord, my fiancé. Picture a very subtle, snarky performance with a thick Swedish accent, which probably isn't how you envisioned Salamandra, but uh, I promise it'll grow on you. Demither is a sea witch under Spar's control. I would cast Terra Strong in that part. Half of Demether's appearances are in her child form, Meredith. Uh, I'd cast Mackenzie Eby, who is sort of Natalie's and my partner in crazy ambitions of cartoons and junk. And finally, Kem, the two-headed demon dog of Lord Spar. On the very rare occasion that Kem talks, I'd want him voiced by Keith David. Upper Worlders. Inhabitants of Droon refer to our world as the Upper World, and a few people from there are recurring, namely our heroes' parents and teachers. The Hinkles, Eric's parents, appear in many, many books. I fantasize Judy Greer and Daniel Radcliffe in those roles. The kid's teacher, Mrs. Michaels, also appears regularly, and I'd want to cast Sydney Joy, my mom. I always try to cast my mom in stuff. For Mr. Frando, the gym teacher, I'll go with Jeff Garland. The Krogers and the Rubens, Neil's and Julie's parents respectively, don't appear quite as often, with Julie's mom actually being a one-shot character. For the Krogers, let's go with Ivana Lynch and Macaulay Culkin. For the Rubens, Matthew Lewis and Jennifer Hale. Yeah, I figured each of the kids should have one Harry Potter cast member as a parent. Recurring characters. Let's talk some recurring good guys who don't have quite enough appearances to get friends and allies status. Thog, the giant who inhabits the library at Zorfendorf Castle. Let's go with Jason Siegel. I, I like Jason Siegel. Pasha, weaver of magic carpets and inventor of all manner of magical items. I got Steve Buscemi vibes, I don't know. Captain Thumpinius Bludge, our window into the lives of Lord Spar's soldiers, the Nins. I think is a good place to stick Jermaine Clement. Bodo and Vasa, guardians of the Tower of Memory. I thought a notable duo for the role. Peter Shukoff and Lloyd Alquist, creators of ERB. That would be fun. The Tower of Memory's magical quill, named... Quill occasionally gains the ability to speak, and I would cast Craig Ferguson in that role. The Orkins' peaceful counterparts to the Nins include a few recurring allies, such as the young optimist Jambo and his uncle Mudgy, for whom I'd respectively cast uh, Thomas Lennon and Danny Trejo. Queen Hazad, Queen of the Ghost Warriors of Agravur. I wanted Rusi Taylor, but uh, sadly she died recently, so Team Starkid replacement, Jamie Lynn Beatty. Hortensia, the stone oracle of the Farn Woods. I thought it'd be nice and silly to cast Ellen DeGeneres. Flink, Galen's little sprite messenger, Kathy Cavadini. And Grindel, king of the hog elves, often seen disguised as a terrifying scaly monster, should be voiced by Clancy Brown when in his monster disguise, and Gilbert Gottfried in his natural state. Minor characters, good or neutral characters who turn up, like, twice. Sarla and Luma, the twin princesses of Samarindo, played by Melissa Disney. Yoho, Captain of the Fog Pirates, let's go with Brian George. Motley, Otley, and Jotley, the three multicolored crows owned by the Prince of Stars, played respectively by Isabella Akers, Phil Lamar, and Emo Phillips. Khan's family, uh, for his queen, Mrs. Khan, I say April Winchell, and for his tiny son and daughter, Sasha and Lena, Katie Lee and Aria Curzon. The wooden bird who aids Eric in some quest or another. David Spade, because one of my lifelong ambitions is to cast David Spade in a dramatic role. Minor antagonists, uh, villains and henchmen who don't appear so often. 
the Hagans, a trio of hag dragons, enemies to the Knights of Silver Snow. Uh, for this trio of sisters, I'm going to go Ming Na Wen, Tress McNeil, and Lori Allen. Zor, the sleeping giant of Gaul. He doesn't say much, but what he does say, let's give to T.C. Carson. And for Om, the evil spirit inside the Red Eye of Dawn, uh, my vote goes to Charlie Adler. For the Hawk Bandits of Tarkoom, a semi-recurring group of adversaries, uh, this is a very interesting story. Early in the series, we meet the bandit's seductive leader, Ving, let's cast Jonathan Frakes, and his lieutenant, Ichthos, let's go with Cam Clark. Uh, when it's discovered much later that Ving has a twin sister, Ming, well, I had to cast Marina Sirtis. And when it's discovered even after that that the two of them have an annoying baby brother, Ing, I had to go with Will Wheaton. I really love how that worked out. One-Shot Characters, Season 1. Nearly every book debuts a whole bunch of new characters, uh, not all of whom end up coming back, so here's assorted characters who appear in only one book. For the Moon Fox from The Golden Wasp, I go with Jan Rabson, and uh, that's it for Season 1 one-shots. One-Shot Characters Season 2. In The Tower of the Elf King, Eric meets a Nin woman who serves to humanize the Nins quite a bit. She's guest star worthy. Let's go Conchata Farrell. Quest for the Queen's antagonists are Tarak and Slag, an evil clown and his strongman sidekick who surprisingly never returned to the series. I'd want Tarak played by Zachary Levi and Slag by Patrick Warburton. At the end of The Hawk Bandits of Tarkoom, Neil's dog Snorky briefly gains the power of speech. Thought that'd be a great place for a cameo from Jess Arnell. The Mask of Malaban introduces us to the Fire Frogs, who guard some of Droon's most dangerous prisoners. The one who has an appearance in that book, I'd give as a cameo from Andrea Libman. Voyage of the Jaffa Wind briefly shows of the dim-witted giant Num. I think Bill Fagerbacky would be a good fit. In the Moon Scroll, Emperor Ko sends three goblins to steal a wand. The scariest of the three doesn't talk, but I'd cast Jeff Bennett as the Stone Goblin and Tom Kenny as the Fire Goblin. In the Knights of Silver Snow, we meet a Nin chieftain who remembers that his race used to be the Orkins, and he becomes an Orkin chief. I'd give that role to Gil Birmingham. One-Shot Character Season 3. The Coiled Viper features Piku, a representative of the Hubaz from the shadowy lands of Calabaz. How about Wayne Brady? In the Ice Case of Krog is the only occasion in which Kia's magical harp starts singing in riddles. I'd want that singing to be provided by Sheena Easton. Wizard or Witch introduces Augustus Rodolphus Septimus Thumb, the Drumar elf who guides Kia through her quest. A special edition merits a special guest star. I'd love to see David Tennant in this role. One-Shot Characters Season 4. The Fortress of the Treasure Queen debuts Basra, the Treasure Queen herself, for whom I'd cast Elizabeth Daly. Voyagers of the Silver Sand debuts three one-shot characters. One is Bleg, who I was convinced, due to his detailed entry on the Drune Encyclopedia on the Scholastic website, would have a larger role. Uh, not so much, but it gave me a place to stick D. Bradley Baker. For Thesha, a young nin girl, Sally Safiati. And this book also debuts a past version of the rat-faced snitchers of Zoop. For their then-current captain, I'd cast Eddie Deason. The Moon Dragon shows us the ancient Knights of Pym, who Gethwing transforms into his Black Dark Knights. I'd want their captain, in both forms, to be voiced by Ed Asner. In Sorcerer, there's a very emotional scene where Kid Spar speaks to a Drumar. I'd want a guest star to play this moment, so for the character I've clept the Drumar Lord, I'd cast Cory Burton. A One-Shot Characters, Season 5. In Escape from Jabberloo, we meet lots of one-shot characters. First, a Drumar elf who casts a defensive enchantment by singing. This struck me as a good place for a Josh Groban cameo. For the unscrupulous merchants Mr. Duppy and Mr. Bethel, I'd cast John DiMaggio and James Arnold Taylor. And for the book's main antagonist, Prince Umberto, that's a good new place to stick Mark Hamill. In The Treasure of the Orkins, we meet the modern lineup of the rat-faced snitchers of Zoop. I would cast Jim Belushi as their bombastic leader Plundit, Diedrich Bader as his sidekick Smeed, and Quentin Flynn as their much-abused troubadour. Flight of the Blue Serpent features Bagle, chieftain of the Snowfolk, and I'd cast Fred Tottashore. In the City of Dreams features two one-shot characters, Captain Talon of the Wingwolves, for whom I'd cast Kevin Conroy, 
and the Duke of the City of Dreams, Bula, let's say Steven Tyler. Crown of Wizards introduces us to Max's home village, where we meet the Spider Trolls leader, Mayor Tibble, and Max's little nephew, Feodor. Respectively, I'd cast Peter Dinklage and Kelly Stables. A One-Shot Characters, Season 6. In The Lost Empire of Kumba, we have two one-shot antagonists, the Snakeling King Slyvor and the Beast Captain Grunto. Respectively, I'd go with James Hong and Gary Anthony Williams. We also meet a long-foreshadowed good guy, Mashta, Empress of the Sand Children. I say Kate Higgins. In Knights of the Ruby Wand, we meet a whole bunch of new characters. First, the Witch Sisters, Hagdi and Magdi. Let's go with Lorraine Newman and Twiggy. For the Tree Weasels, Duke Anga and his assistant Pinch, I'm going for Cheech Marin and Carlos Alazraki. And finally for Nock, captain of the Skeletal Scorth Warriors, John Kassir. The book The Genie King features the dog-eared thief and his mustached companion. Again, I thought they'd be important because of the Drune Encyclopedia, so uh, I amused about casting them. Barkat Abdi and Billy Burke. The series finale, The Final Quest, only debuts one new character, that being Wooten Twee's cousin, Weef. What the heck, it's the last episode, so let's splurge on Emma Watson. And phew, that's it. Thanks for watching this crazy dream of mine all the way through. Uh, to learn about projects I'm actually working on, uh, don't forget to visit my website.